Welcome to the Pencil Bob channel. I hope you enjoy my stories. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification icon so you never miss out. Now on with the stories. I still can't believe what's been going on in my condo building on the Upper East Side. I've lived here since 2016 and I've had an e-scooter since day one. It was a no-brainer, really. The building is located half a block from the river and getting around without a car could be a real challenge. The e-scooter was the perfect solution. It's environmentally friendly, convenient, and just plain fun. But about a year ago, I received a letter from the building manager saying that anyone with an e-mobility device would have to remove it from their apartments. The letter claimed that these devices were a fire hazard and that the building couldn't risk having them on the premises. I was skeptical, to say the least. I'd done my research, and I knew that my e-scooter was all certified, which means it meets the highest safety standards. I ignored the letter, figuring it was just a scare tactic. But then, this past October, I received an amendment to the building's house rules. And there it was, in black and white. No e-mobility devices would be allowed anywhere in the building. The penalty for non-compliance was steep minus $1,500 for the first offense and $750 for each subsequent offense. I was furious. I'd had my e-scooter for years, and I'd never had any problems with it. I'd always been careful to charge it in a well-ventilated area, and I never left it unattended. I decided to take my case to the board meeting, which was scheduled for a month later. I spent hours preparing my presentation, researching the safety features of all certified devices, and gathering data on the benefits of e-mobility. I even managed to get in touch with the global director of all solutions, who was willing to speak to the board about the safety of lithium-ion batteries. I was confident that I could convince them to make an exception for me. But when I presented my case to the board, I was met with resistance. They seemed uninterested in learning about the safety features of my e-scooter, and they dismissed my concerns out of hand. I offered to compromise, suggesting that I could keep my scooter in the bike room and purchase a camera to ensure that I wasn't charging it on the premises. But they refused to budge. I was frustrated and angry, but I wasn't ready to give up. I started doing some research, looking for ways to fight the ban. That's when I stumbled upon the Electric Vehicle Rights Act, a bill that was passed a couple of years ago. The bill makes it illegal for an HOA to ban a unit owner from having a charging station in their unit. I realized that if I could argue that my e-scooter charger was a charging station, I might have a case. But then I discovered that there's a new bill being proposed by Senator Felder of Uth, which would require e-mobility devices to be registered as vehicles. If that bill passes, I think I'll have a strong argument for why my e-scooter should be allowed in the building. I'm not sure what the future holds, but I'm determined to fight this ban. I'm meeting with my local assemblywoman to discuss the situation and see if she can offer any guidance or support. I'm also looking for an HOA lawyer who's willing to take on my case. It's not just about me, though. I know that there are plenty of other people in the city who are facing similar bans in their own buildings. We need to educate people about the safety features of all certified devices, and we need to push back against these arbitrary rules. Every time I think about giving up, I remember why I got the e-scooter in the first place. Living in this city can be exhausting, and having a quick, easy way to get around has been a game-changer for me. It's not just about convenience, it's about quality of life. There's a sense of freedom when I ride my scooter along the river, the wind in my hair, and the cityscape blurring by. It's my escape from the hustle and bustle, a small joy in the midst of the city's chaos. And I can't fathom giving that up because of an unfounded fear. The irony is that our building prides itself on being forward-thinking and environmentally friendly. We have recycling programs, energy-efficient lighting, and even a community garden on the roof. Banning e-scooters seems completely out of step with those values. E-mobility devices are a part of the future of sustainable urban living. And we should be embracing them, not banning them. I've spoken to several of my neighbors about this issue, and many of them are on my side. They see the benefits of e-scooters and other e-mobility devices and agree that the ban is overreaching. Some of them are older and don't use e-scooters themselves, but they understand that this issue is about more than just one type of device. It's about our right to choose how we live and move in our own homes. One of my neighbors, Mrs. Stein, has lived in the building for over 30 years. She's a spry 75-year-old with a sharp wit and a passion for community activism. When I told her about the ban, she was incensed. It's absurd, she said. What's next? Are they going to ban electric wheelchairs? Where does it end? 
Mrs. Stein has been a great ally, helping me gather signatures for a petition to present to the board. We've already collected over 50 signatures, and we're aiming for 100 before the next board meeting. She's also put me in touch with a lawyer who specializes in HOA disputes. Another neighbor, Raj, works in tech and has a deep understanding of lithium-ion batteries and e-mobility technology. He's been an invaluable resource, helping me understand the technical aspects of the issue and providing expert opinions that I can use in my arguments. Raj also uses an e-scooter to commute to his job in Midtown, and he's just as determined as I am to fight this ban. I've even had some support from unexpected quarters. The doorman, Joe, pulled me aside one evening when I was coming back from a ride. I heard about the scooter thing, he said, glancing around to make sure no one else was listening. I think it's a load of bull. My nephew has an e-bike, and it's perfectly safe. You need any help, you let me know. Despite all this support, the board remains stubborn. At the last meeting, they reiterated their stance, citing the same tired arguments about fire hazards and safety concerns. It's frustrating to see them so resistant to change, especially when the facts are on our side. I've started to wonder if there's something else going on here. One of the board members, Mr. Turner, is a retired firefighter, and he's been the most vocal opponent of e-scooters. I respect his experience and understand his concerns, but I can't shake the feeling that there's more to this than just safety. Maybe it's a generational thing, or maybe there's some behind-the-scenes politics that I'm not aware of. Whatever it is, I'm not backing down. I've invested too much time and energy into this fight to walk away now. And it's not just about my scooter anymore. It's about standing up for what I believe is right and making sure that our building is a place where innovation and sustainability are welcomed, not stifled. As I continue to navigate this battle, I'm learning a lot about perseverance and the importance of community. I've connected with neighbors I barely knew before, and together we're building a coalition to fight for our rights. It's a slow, frustrating process, but it's also incredibly rewarding. I'm not sure what the outcome will be, but I'm willing to fight for my right to use my e-scooter. It's not just a convenience, it's a way of life. And I'm not going to let a bunch of bureaucrats take that away from me. If anyone has any suggestions or knows of an HOA lawyer who's willing to take on my case, I'd love to hear from you. This is a fight worth fighting, and I'm not going to give up until I win. Every day I wake up, I am reminded of the freedom and joy my e-scooter brings me. Each ride through the city reinforces my determination to see this through. The road ahead is uncertain, and I have no illusions about the difficulty of the battle, but giving up is not an option. This is my home, my city, and my way of life, and I will do everything in my power to protect it. I too live in a co-op on the UES. My Dultron is also all certified, but I cannot keep it in my apartment. They do let me store and charge it in the bike room for a small monthly fee. Their charging ports are also on timers. Try pleading your case and search what are other buildings' policies in this matter. Who is your management company? Try reaching out to them too. The HOA is going to be more worried about their building not starting on fire than about someone who really, really wants their scooter, even if his is special. I get it. It sucks. But these types of rules and regulations aren't made arbitrarily. They usually come into play because somewhere, someone has experienced a severe incident, like a fire, or worse, someone has died. There's often a tragic story behind these regulations, where lives have been lost or people have gone through incredibly traumatic events. Insurance companies also play a significant role in these decisions. They put a lot of pressure on buildings and property managers to mitigate risks and prevent similar situations from happening again. If there have been incidents of fires caused by e-mobility devices, insurance companies will push for strict measures to be put in place. They want to minimize their liability and ensure that the properties they insure are as safe as possible. So, while it may seem unfair and overly cautious, the reality is that these rules are there to protect everyone in the building. It's about balancing individual desires with the collective safety of the community. The board and the management are trying to prevent any potential disasters and ensure that everyone in the building feels secure. It's a tough situation because it feels like personal freedom is being compromised for the sake of safety, but in the end, they believe it's better to be safe than sorry. That's a bit disingenuous, and comparing apples to oranges. Yes, they could both start fires, but gas already isn't available in most condos, apartments, and the hazard is more due to negligence while the battery packs and scooters and similar devices can just explode on their own. 
and more and more insurance policies will not allow them on premises. And even if some are UL listed, not all are. And there are a ton out there that will have a counterfeit UL listed sticker on them. And again, most importantly, these decisions are made by the insurance companies, not just a cranky board member. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end. To encourage us to make more videos, please like, subscribe, comment, as well as share. Check out this other video if you haven't already.